So, all's well that ends well. Growing way is keen to put his recent mishap behind him. It may not seem like it, but we've been planning for this far longer than I'd care to admit. Each time we woke up, we'd have a long we'd have long discussions about how to save as many of you, of you as we can. Felt, felt like everyone had an opinion on this or that. But one thing we all agreed on was that the people of Ethereus wouldn't take action to save themselves until it was far too late. That's why we uh, were striving to make the moon a vibrant, magical place they'd hop at the chance to visit, rather than waiting for the flames of oblivion to get them off their tails and force them to accept our invitation. The resident residential quarters may not be um, up to the necessary standards just yet, but there are plenty of uh, other places worth seeing. You've already had a look around the curatorium, but wait until you see what's waiting for you at the east end of the borough. Follow me. Wait, I'm stupid. That's why I'll just hop off. I took like a nice like 15 minute break so that, so that I could fucking eat my sandwich that I've had for like an hour. So that's fun. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, be the current. Oh boy. Ugh. This way. There he is. Hello there, friend. Good, you're here. No, th uh, through this door is Greatest Ends Veil. It was named for, uh, as such because it's the veil to end all veils. The most beautiful forest you'll ever see. Wait, a forest? Wow, okay. Uh, we understand the people of Ethereus enjoy taking leisurely walks through natural spaces and the like, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How about we start with a nice stroll to the fountain? This way. Whoa! Wait, there's no forest. You lied! Oh, what the fuck? Is this water or? No, it's not. Okay. Whoa. This is. Whoa. That's all I have to say. Southeast? Oh, is there something over here? Oh, yeah. Ooh, there's water. Nice. So, what did you think of the forest? It's positively, uh, isn't it positively pleasant? Simply sublime? Um, what would you say? I couldn't see the forest or the trees. I didn't see any, wait, you don't mean those crystals out there are, or it is as transcendent, transcendent as burying your face in chocobo plumage and taking a good long whiff. I, I didn't see any, unless you're talking about the crystals. Right you are. Our forest is, ma uh, is made of crystals and constructs, dotting the landscape as far as the eye can see. B building this place was a challenge, let me tell you. Since we were born here, we've never seen trees in person before, let alone a forest. 
The information sent by our collaborators was quite enlightening, but after much deliberation, we decided to use crystalline constructs in place of living trees. Oh, not... Mm, 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 no. And thanks to our atmospheric circulation system, this place produces air as clean as you'd find in a forest on Theris. The fountain here behind us, powered by the rather large crystal adorning its top, plays a vital role in supplying us with fresh water. Much time and effort was spent making it the most spherical of spheres, and I dare say the, uh, the unparalleled roundness speaks for itself. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I enjoy nothing more than a nice long stretch and a spot of relaxation whenever I come up here. You look like you could do with the stretch yourself. No! I don't wanna... I don't want to stretch. Oh well. Your sheep piece said make a fool out of yourself. That's the spirit. I feel more relaxed simply watching you. A sight worth the many years spent building this place. If it's not too much to ask, it's always been a dream of mine to take a walk through the forest with someone else. Oh, sorry, someone from Cathiris. Could we maybe? Sure. <gasps> you will? Oh, be still my quivering whiskers. Okay. Yep. Another another escort quest. Cool. Alright. Oh my god, look at him! Come down here. Avery, that I could be more helpful to you by teaching you a little bit about the moon and what it is we do. When we were first created, the moon's sole purpose was to hold Zodiac, and there was absolutely nothing to be found here. Eventually, Highland gave us our first task, furnish the moon with propulsion systems, capable of facilitating travel to other stars. It sounds impressive, and I suppose in some respects it is, but it was only possible thanks to the knowledge Highland shared with us. We also had a lot of time to get it done, 6,000 years, give or take. But anyways, let's keep going. This may come as a surprise, but we didn't uh, begin building the habit habitable areas until the propulsion systems were ready. Considering how long it took, I wish we'd started sooner. Who would have thought we needed 4,000 years to make all this? It certainly wasn't worth a dare rush either. We had to create inf in uh, infrastructure and countless supporting systems, some of which couldn't, uh, wouldn't be operational until hundreds of years later. And then there was that brief period where our pr uh, productivity came to a screeching halt when that bizarre red satellite was sent up from Etheris, the Elegans Mischief, I think. We thought maybe some new nefarious, uh, some new nefarious actor was colluding with Zodiac. All we could do was stand by and brace ourselves for the worst. I can, I. What? I can't tell you how relieved we were when Highland informed of us uh, informed us of its destruction. Oh yes, there was much joyous humming that day. Cool. This feels like a casino. I'm not gonna lie, like one of those like Vegas casinos. All right. Uh, wait. Asked about the taste. Wait. The taste of the rainbow crystal. What? No, I'm not even sure what it is you do with crystals on a theorist, but we don't eat them, and certainly not this one. It's possessed of all six elements, wind, lightning, fire, earth, ice, and water. We use crystals like these to maintain the moon's elemental equilibrium. It's worth mentioning, though, that because of Highland's influence, being the embodiment of tranquility and stasis and all, manipulating the elements here is different than it might be on a theorist. A conjuring of fire would sooner dry your clothes than singe them, for example. Put simply, the etheric conditions are ill-suited to growth, which is why the surface is mostly barren. Of course, this was all necessary to keep the raging energies of Zodiac in check. Yeah, I get that. 
Oh, why am I lagging? What? What is happening? Say, did you notice anything particular about the treetops? I mean, apart from the fact that they're massive crystals, and not trees. Uh... I'll give you a hint. It's the golden rings emanating from the glowing spheres. Along with the devices fixed near the ceiling, they fulfill similar roles to our sun, and do so better even. The sun and similar celestial objects in the great expanse radiate energy that is harmful to your bodies. These rings shield you from that energy while allowing you to bathe in the perfect amount of sunlight, or rather a close approximation of it. Pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? Oh, and if you look closely, you'll see different types of trees have ever so slightly different curvature. Yes, indeed. This forest is truly the greatest. Do they? Do they actually? There was something else I wanted to tell you about. Um, oh, right. The, uh, the propulsion system and habitat facilities were completed around 2,000 years ago, but that the most important features were fit for purpose. Which is all well and good, except we still knew nothing, absolutely nothing about the present day people of Etheris. Why not go and visit Etheris yourself, you might ask? Strictly forbidden. Were a technology or knowledge of the moon's true purpose exploited for evil ends, the results could be disastrous. And there were a few more rejoinings, and it became increasingly difficult to converse with Heidelin. If fearful, fearful we might lose the ability to communicate with her altogether, we beseeched her find people on Etheris we could trust to help. We were quite fortunate enough everything worked out as it did. Interesting, interesting. And last one. With the exception of routine inspections and maintenance, we remained asleep and waited, hopeful Heidelin would find someone who would help us. Eventually, she did, and though her power was waning, we were able to speak to them directly for a short while. We shared with them everything we could, including our knowledge of the heavens and a means to travel here to the moon. They certainly didn't waste any time with what we taught them. No more than a few years after that, our collaborators found a means to convey messages and supplies to us from down below. With all the letters, books, and other resources they sent, we learned enough to start making more meaningful changes to the moon. And now you're here, hopefully enjoying yourself as much as I am. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I am enjoying like this place. I'm not gonna lie. I knew you would like Greatest Enville. I knew it. Thank you again for coming here, by the way. I know it was just a walk through the forest, but it meant a lot to me. Oh, hi, you two. There you are. I take it you've already received the grand tour? A shame we missed it. Growing way, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I uh, is this about the teleporter to the residential area? No, never mind that. We have more pressing matters at hand. I will be calling an emergency meeting shortly and your attendance is required. Really? I can't imagine why you'd, you'd uh, need me there for that, but if you insist. We won't be away for too long, so you all are more welcome to continue looking around the burrow. Now, come along, growing way. Before we arrived, you seemed to be in the midst of a rousing conversation with your guide. Did you learn anything of import? I mean, yeah, about like the collaborators and... How many years, basically, it took for them to build all this? They spent 12,000 years preparing for this. The appoint with the appointed hour fast approaching, I can certainly understand their restlessness. But still. It remains to be seen if the people can be persuaded to evacuate when there are yet no signs of the final days. 
What's more, the technology of this place defies imagination. I doubt there are many who would who would readily come to terms with living in such surroundings. Whoever these collaborators are, unless they are possessed of the world's most uh, charming personalities or a means to forcibly evacuate people, they will meet with a great deal of resistance. Indeed, even if faced with annihilation, the decision to forsake all one knows cannot be made lightly. It is a conundrum that we're facing. Forgive me, friends, but I must beg your leave. There is another matter which yet, uh, yet begs for my attention. Of course, we can accompany you if you like. Nay, that will not be necessary, if you will excuse me. decisions lie ahead of us. Preparation for the evacuation of Etheris is indeed crucial, but I am not yet willing to forsake our world and its reflections, and I trust I am not alone in my re uh, in my reticence. Nope, you and I share the same idea. Oh, come on! You gotta be kidding me! Back to old tricks. By now, Thaker can tell when his friends are up to something. Yep. Did Urian Jay seem strange to you? More than, uh, more so than usual, I mean. I know he has a penchant for keeping his own counsel, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Would you go and see if he's alright? Jishtola and I will remain here and see what else we can do- oh, sorry, can learn from the final days. If you hurry, perhaps you can catch up to him. Urian Jay, you better not be doing what I think you're doing. Cause if so, we gonna have problems. And my problems, I mean, I'm gonna fucking fight you, dude. Oh, you know what? No, hit control. There we go. I'm lazy. Be out doing suspicious shit. Cutscene. Let's go. Rianji appears to be heading towards the entrance to Best Burrow's Burrow. Or Best Ways Burrow. I'm stupid. Jay, where are you? Oh no. Ariange ventures off into Mare Lamentorium for reasons unknown. You must tread carefully, else you might sense your presence. No, I like literally failed at this so hard during this one side quest. All right. stupid. Oh no, I'm stuck. 
we see me fizzle over here. Don't look. Don't notice me. I love how you can see where people are like, like these people are definitely on the same quest. Hi. Oh god, I got stuck. Fuck. I think I might have failed. Oh, no, we're fine. Foggers. Hey, Ariane J, what the fuck are you up to? Please explain yourself. Please, for the sake of everything. What are you up to? Thine arrival is timely as ever. Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? Mm -hmm. It was not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity? And Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life. I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Menphilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain, brokered by my hand, were the scions robbed of a dear comrade, and Flamine, her beloved daughter. Oh, hey. It's not your fault. You couldn't have known, dude. Two souls, whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved even had I thought to protest. But protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives. Ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind. As does the memory of another lost to my inaction. Oh, he's talking about Mugrida. No, oh, hi. This music is fucking sad. Dearest Mugrida, who did face death unflinching that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois ever looking to the greater good. Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind. But could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The 
The calamity of Amorat was a tragedy beyond reckoning. One which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle. Haunted by ghosts of those we have lost. Clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? Oh, man. Fuck. Oh, that's... That's a heavy weight, yeah. Um, what will you say? Sometimes there's no right answer. Have faith in yourself and your decisions. Take heart and protect well those you can, or... Would that we had time to weigh the costs. I'm gonna go with the second one. Have faith in yourself and in your decision. Take heart and protect well those you can. Even if we can't save them all, we can still protect some. Sage counsel indeed. I see. Wisdom as befits a great world. Curious that he should think thee in need of such encouragement. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. It's kind of nice, because we haven't, yeah, we haven't talked to Urianji, like, alone, ever, before, I don't think. Or at least, like, once or twice, but, you know. I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperit's proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today. What are they- what are they conspiring? What- what the- Hi there. In truth, my reason for traveling hither was to effect a plan of my own. What in the world- Oh, I skipped over the dialogue. Um, for traveling hither was to effect a plan of mine own. A plan which may pave a way forward for us all. May, I say, for there's no guarantee of success. Tis the reason I set out alone. That failure should, should it come would be mine to bear alone. Yet thou standest before me with pre uh, preferred, proffered, proffered hand and open heart. So it be remiss of me to refuse thy am uh, amity. And so I ask, would, wouldst thou join me in my endeavor? Yeah. What is that thing in the distance? Is that a fate? Time to end the episode here. It's reaching that 30 minute mark. So, next time, we help Marianne J with whatever he, uh, he needs to do. Until then, take care.